Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ingus and I'm from IGS Electronics and today we're going to be progressing with our servo control But before we get started, I'll show you something A package that I recently purchased from a Mitsubishi uh, From Mitsubishi uh, reseller If you look in there, what, what you get, and I'll tell you in a minute the price for this like Mitsubishi at the moment, this is an FX5U PLC Which is a 32MR DS you get that in this package. Obviously, the cables I just showed you a second ago. You get a IQ Works 2 software, full package, and I mean, do check out my channel. And I'm gonna hopefully remember to leave in the description below the video where I covered that. And also, you have an a HMI screen and a pretty big one as well. I haven't even opened it up yet. I just thought once once that offer was offered to me, I grabbed it because it's ridiculously cheap. And I mean. It's Bishi at the moment is targeting market like crazy, you know, they are reducing to practically giving away their software and even 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 their products, you know, in, in a way. So I paid I paid something about oh, I have obviously discounts and things like that from the company I purchased this for. I paid about 600 quid. So that PLC alone here in UK and some of the retailers is about 670 quid. So pretty much everything else is for free. So if you look at those packages both together, software is for nothing so guys if you are getting started in a plc and you're looking to a uh, your sort of progress and get go the legitimate way and get the get a uh is my camera in a drunk position i hope not it looks it looks all right and getting started in a plc with legit software and the, the, obviously the iq2 package comes with everything you can do all sorts of things with it and then in the mitsubishi plc come on it's a good PLC and it's, it's one of the leading ones and a lot of people are big fans about siemens and this and that Yes, Siemens is great. Don't get me wrong. They're really, really good. And we are going to be working with Siemens very, very, uh, quite a lot in the future. But doesn't mean it's better than Mitsubishi in many ways. So uh, I personally found it easier to work with Mitsubishi. So uh, look, guys, options down there. Guys, definitely get in touch if you're looking to get one of these packages. They are on limited time offer only, obviously. And obviously stocks are low so uh i had to wait about three to four weeks for one of these obviously because everybody as soon as they found out about the options and of course they all grabbed it too. why not so anyway let's get back to what we're going to be doing today today we're going to be checking out the the servo motor with the j3 uh servo guy in here guys we already covered how to get connected to this one how to go with that one or you can see there i did a bit of a modification and i thought how we're going to go with the switching so uh we have to find a way of controlling our servo motor and there's so many different controls you can do in the servo motor so uh, I decided to use HMI for it rather than having a uh, IO station and for that we're going to be using got 1000 screen I got good thousand got 2000 as well and things like that but I thought you know what I choose got 1000 there's nothing wrong with got 2000 I just didn't want it to take out of the box so we're going to be using this screen in here where I'm going to be transferring all my uh, data switches and things like that and the first thing we're going to look at it today is uh, quickly going to be checking out uh, the buffer memory. Buffer memory is pretty much where all the controls happens for this guy in here. Well, this guy in here and then it controls that one. So uh, quickly run you through. I'm not going to go to go all inside and blah, 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 how to do this. And hopefully well, the, 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 the small uh, explanations I'm going to do, you guys are going to be well aware, well on your way to understand what you need to do to get your uh, MRJ3 servo uh, drive going. It's pretty straightforward once you get the grips for it. But first, we can do the setup. Because we need to uh, uh, set this guy up a little bit more for the servo, for this, uh, not the servo, but for the FX3U20SC -S 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 card to work the way we are going to be using it. So, without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So the first thing what we're going to be look at is we need to change a couple of a uh, uh, couple of things in our uh, uh, FX config configurator. If you've done the last video, we already done a bit of a changes to set the, set it ready for the servo and I for sure was make them to communicate properly. We've done that and there's a couple of things this time we're going to be doing as well. This guy in here which is magnification. So this is where you can magnify at the moment. Uh, it's quite a large numbers need to be used for the rotations to happen if you don't want to at the moment as you can see one rotation is 262,144 pulses that's a lot of pulses for one rotation then it sort of gives you an idea for an accuracy 
So you can, if you don't want to work with such large numbers, you can magnify it in here by 1000, by 1, by 10, by 100, and so on. So it's, this is where you can use that. But our, for our system to work, the way how we are going to operate, we need to make sure the OPI interlock setting is set to invalid. So once you've done that, just load it into your server. And if you've done everything we did in the last video, you should be good to go. So once, uh, no, we're not going to move that. Once you've done that, we need to uh, get ahead to the manual. I am here in an appendix. I was at the manual is quite a big one, but definitely this is your best friend for you to understand really what the things are and what they do. In uh, for the for the for this card, everything is uh, stored in buffer memories, and each buffer memory is assigned to specific cards, as in uh, for or the PLC. That's why sometimes some of the PLCs can't do it because their memories are too small. This one, however, has all everything. Uh, this is if uh, in this manual, sort of is going to show you where everything is uh, stored. So as you can see, today, if you want to read the current address of the server, it will be stored in a, B, uh, a BFM buffer memory. 0 and 1 and so on as you can see where everything is stored and you can read this information out and transfer it into your data registers if you wish to which which I am doing as you can see all sorts of things can be adjusted read understood and used for everything anything else you want to do it with it with a move instructions so uh, some of them are a uh, data data and some of them are bits and then as you can see in here so status uh, server status bits if you want to read them out on your screen or send some sort of lamps out or digital then you can do it do that in here so uh and the most important ones that we're going to be working on in here in here is these bits in here so as you can see now that this bit uh, that's the operation command bits it will start and do jog and blah blah in here 518 519 will be operation commands too again there's all sorts of different things can server off commands or prime transfer command again change command, all sorts of things you want to do you can assign you can use buffer memory 519 and then your other operation pattern selection this is where you select how you want your server to be controlled and what is like one speed we're going to go through most of them in the upcoming videos so uh, again using a bit selection in here uh, to uh, turn them on you're probably wondering how do I turn them on it is using move instruction you can do a couple of ways there's the you using to and from uh, instruction but uh, or you just can use move instruction I'll be working with move so uh, because I find it easier I like it that way probably it's not easier but I just like it that way so uh, and uh, so yeah we'll be told by, by by sending in uh, you can you can do by move instruction sending a K value into it, a K or a H value and we'll activate the bit or you can assign memory auxiliary memory bits to it auxiliary M bits to it not memory bits to it so uh, as you can see let me progress down here there's more there's control commands again for all sorts of different things you're trying to do do read the manual manual is huge i'm not going to go through manual and try and explain you what each thing is read it and it's fairly well, more or less self-explanatory well uh it, it, it's just this is just an appendix and here we where all the, um, the table information is stored and so on so uh this is the manual that we need to uh, pretty much get things going the main bits we're going to be working is these ones in here so when we get to the HM uh, to a um, uh, or a, a melts of AGX works too. This is what we're using, and we're also using AGX developer, not GX designer, to uh, sort of uh, uh, get everything on our screen. It's quite straightforward. Nothing too fancy. Again, I'm not the greatest world's greatest designer on the screen. Things like that. That's what I don't do for a living. I just do when I need it. For I just put everything on a screen so we can turn bits on and off. As you can see, each one of them are M's. And uh, by activating these M's, you transfer the data into buffer memory. And buffer memory activates certain bits for us. So, uh, having done that, so I'll quickly show you how the buffer memory is formulated. And that will be in here. We are using in this specific one. Remember, uh, G518 is where we're activating the bits. And what we're going to do, we're going to assign M bits to it. I call it the sign, probably some other people call it differently. By by doing a move and then K4 E K4 M0. So let me explain you how that K4 M0 works. Each K will represent four M bits, if as long as the M is after that, after the after the four or whatever number it is. So I'm saying in here K4, which means it will be four groups of four bits, starting bit M0. So so from now now as as I written that. 
M0 to M15 will be assigned to this memory bit, uh, buffer memory. And you formulate a unit number where your unit is sitting on your uh, in your PLC. In our case, as remember from last video, I, that, in our case, a unit, that is unit zero, and then it's just buffer memory number, which is more formulated as G518. And now, once we did that, all these M bits now, the M0 is going to be this, M1 is going to be this, M2 is going to be this, and la 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 la, la and so on. And then you can do exactly the same for this one, exactly the same for that one. So now we assigned our M bits, as you can see in here, I have assigned my, uh, ooh, don't want to do that, uh, and my M bits, I've done it for my uh, 519, I've done it for my uh, 520, and also done it for 64, I'm not sure what I'll come oh yeah, that's for the readout. And then in here, as you can see, my 500, uh, my 500 and 501, it's my, uh, where I send my address. So as you can see down there, target address. And I also in 502 and 503, I send my speed. And remember, you can do that by using data registers to send in the information. And that's what I'm doing in here. But as you can notice, I'm using dmove. Because you send in large, such a large numbers, you have to use dmove, which be basically, simple move, will, uh, simple one data register consists of 16, uh, 16 bits. But because you because your uh, in 60 bits go only to 65,000, you're working like millions. You need to use two data registers to 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 work with, and that's exactly what this manual is saying in here. Is going to be two data registers, and exact and you need and once you transfer it, you need to make sure when you put, let's say D0, don't try to use D1 somewhere else. Because automatically, as you make D move, it will occupy D0 and D1, and then and, 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 and that'll be used for, uh, for 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 transferring the data. With both of those data will be occupied. Let's say you put down the D1 in here and try to do something in here. This is all gonna start messing with each other. It will work. Don't get me wrong, but it will start messing with each other's numbers. So remember. As soon as you put D, you're using two data registers, not one, and they are in tandem with each other, one right next to each other. D1, it will be like D0, D1. Then as you can see down here, I'm using D2, but D3 is already occupied, even though you can't see it. And as you can see down there, D4, it's already uh, occupied at the, at the D5, and the next one I would use would be D6. So as you can see down here, I'm using D2 to transfer the uh, address. And D4, right it in D4, I'm sending a speed into it, and that's what you can see on my. Oh, one second. And that's what you can see in this screen. As you can see, D0 in here, just pop up in here. It's quite straightforward. You just uh, choose this guy in here numeric display or numeric input. If you want to input data, use numeric input. If you want to uh, display just data, use display. So you can see that that's display and that's input so I, I send data by editing numbers I send it in D2 and D2 will transfer it to buffer memory and buffer memory will use that data to pretty much position position my uh, uh, as you can see down here on the screen position it to exactly where I want it to be so that's pretty much will do for today so uh, let's jump on to uh, for for this uh, today's uh, more or less what we call it lesson uh, so uh, we are going to uh, jump on there and first test out one speed positioning. Oh, and before we get to, to, to the actual uh, testing, as you can see down there, I'm using M101, activating M9, that will be my start. And as you can see in here, I as I assign all these M bits, I wrote down exactly what uh, the manual is uh, more or less saying in there. So it's pretty much I know exactly which bit is which. So as you can see, you can do it in the comment section. You can uh, assign it. I wrote up all sorts of different things in the end. Yeah, best way to keep an eye on it. What what what's what? Once you uh, pre-assign these M bits, you, it's, it's best to write uh, write into them already. They occupy for something. Otherwise, you're going to be forgetting. Then then system's not going to work and so on. And if you want to see what bits are going on and where, they are in. Uh, you can go in here by clicking. Uh, let me just take this one off. This guy in here. And in here, just start going above buffer memory, type in unit number, and type in what address you want to see. We're going to look at our 500's address, and as you can see down there, 
this is pretty much you can monitor what bits are being turned on and what's not and what is really going on so that's pretty much that is for that and as you can see in here uh, I'm going to be selecting M1, M102 will activate the M40 one speed positioning so that's pretty much how I would do it and as you can see down there by default yeah the servo is on so I'm inverting so this inverting signal down there as soon as the servo starts up it's just uh, the later cards do have a way of turning things up in in uh, uh, in here so let me just show you as you can see servo starts starting up but that's for the, for the uh, certain versions so I do check your versions do check manual which versions that works but it didn't work for mine, so I'm using inverting it. So when it starts up, in uh, I just turn it on a bit, and it will activate the server. So pretty much, hopefully, that is uh, giving you a good understanding. Do let me know in comments below if you're struggling to understand, and I will see of what I can do to make it sound a bit better. But there's going to be a few videos as we progress, and hopefully, I'll be getting message across quite better. So let's get to testing. Here we are. So now we are in front of a uh, our HMR screen. This is our a. Uh, uh, servo motor in here, which is a 400 watt. Uh, what's it, what's the part number? HGKR43 standard servo motor. So what we're going to do in here? This this window is what our actual address is, and this is our speed. So uh, we're going to change our maximum speed is 400 uh, 4 million. That's how fine you can be. So we, can, we just entered the 4 million uh, speed again. That could be uh, read in the manual, which buffer memory is you need to use to do that. And in here we're gonna say, well, we're gonna leave it at zero and tell the uh, servo to pretty much come uh, send send that back to the zero. To activate servo, you can see that I got servo start button. That's an, uh, that's a bit that you can change inside the um, where you can activate and deactivate inside your buffer memories. Again, check them out. Which now which bit is that? So as you can see, I have put that on uh, like that. And as you get this uh, M code number, we're going to be we'll look at that then some other day. And so I we're going to say one speed position. So you need to activate e every time you are you want to do some form of uh, operation. You need to tell them what operation is going to be because there's so many of them. So this is like one speed position. That's all there is. There's like table. I put in a table and there's one speed interrupt, variable speed, and also on and off. Checking out those later on. So now that we've said well, uh, we're going to be working in uh, operation command of uh, speed one speed positioning, and we selected where we want the uh, servo to go, we just click start, and as you can see, he just sent the servo uh, back to zero. It doesn't mean this is zeroing point. We're going to get a zero point in the future. This is just getting your first introduction. So again, let's change that to a uh, 500. Let's tell him to go. And say how quickly you went down there. Now 5,000 is just nothing because remember we're working in uh, high numbers in here because uh, we did not magnify. So we're gonna go 5 million. This is how fine you can go with this. It's just mad. So and then you, every time you change position, and again you can pre-program to to send this data, send with different type of switches can send this information into uh, into the uh, this data uh, this data register. And I will uh, send that to put every position every time you click the start. So that's pretty much what comes down to a one speed position. You enter the, sp you enter the position. And you just tell him to go. And he will just crack on to that position. And then you tell him he's off what speed. So so that is pretty much that is, is, is when it, for the one speed position. And another thing you have in here, if you turn that off, you, you have a jog. Jog frequency can be selected in, in a uh, uh, FX configurator. What's the frequency you want? You can sort of jog it, as you can see. Uh, I can move very finely, very finely to get a position. And when you magnify it, actually each one of these pushes is going to be a little bit, little, little moving if you're looking for that kind of accuracy to achieve something. So that's pretty much a very basic introduction to uh, servos, uh, how to get this servo really going. So hopefully that is helping you out and it's getting you going. And the next videos we're going to be checking out the table operations, interrupt, variables, and many, many different M codes and other things like that. You're definitely going to be checking those things out in upcoming videos. So uh, that will do for today. If you guys are having this the same setup and you're struggling and something is not right, definitely ping me a message across and I will do myself do 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 my best to help you out. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that will do. By the way, if you're working with the 
So Ross, that sound is really annoying. So make sure you have on and off button because that will really drive you crazy. And that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching and I hope it's helping you out. So uh, if you like the video, Please smash that like if you like what we're doing here. Do subscribe and click that notification button and everything else. What other people usually ask, I don't know. My my prime goal is to help you guys out and get you uh, going with industrial automations because it is fairly easy once you get your head around it. So, other than that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.